Well, hello, pre-calculus students. Today's notes are on verifying trigonometric identities. And I just want to start with some tips because a lot of times students just see these problems for the first time and they have no idea what to do. So just some tips here to start. First of all, probably the number one thing that you can do is convert everything to sine and cosine. Second, look for Pythagorean identities. Now, Pythagorean identities, what I mean by that are, are things like um, if you ever saw sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta. Now, it doesn't have to be just sine and cosine. You might have something like the secant squared of theta plus or minus 1. So anytime you have one of these functions squared plus or minus another squared or plus or minus 1, think about those Pythagorean identities. Third, if you're adding or subtracting fractions, try to get common denominators, so try to simplify something algebraically. Fourth factor, again, thinking algebraically. And the fifth tip is really the most obvious, but really the, the most important, just try something. A lot of times students just look at these and they say, I don't know what to do. Well, you need to try something first before you, you know that you can do it or not. Okay, so let's jump right in. So the first equation here we need to verify that that's what's on the left hand side is equal to what's on the right hand side and we could do a couple different things here we could convert everything to sine and cosine but if you think about this we have some expression squared plus one or minus one so let's try to use our trigonometric identities um, let's try to use our Pythagorean identity first now we have a few of them one of them looks something like this one plus the tangent squared of u is equal to the secant squared of u. Okay, and that looks a lot like what we have in this first set of parentheses. Another trig identity says this, the sine squared of u plus the cosine squared of u equals 1. Okay, if we were to subtract 1 from both sides, so move this 1 over here, and subtract sine squared from both sides, we'd get this, the cosine squared of u minus 1 equals minus sine squared of u. Now that looks a lot like what's in this second set of parentheses. So let's make a couple substitutions here. So I can say in the first set of parentheses, let's rewrite that as the secant squared of u, or I should say x here. So all this is the same as secant squared of x. What's in the second set of parentheses is the same as minus the sine squared of x. Now at this point, we don't have anything plus or minus 1, so let's convert to sine and cosine. So secant squared is the same as 1 over the cosine squared of x. And if we multiply these two together, we end up with negative sine squared of x on top and cosine squared of x on the bottom. And sine over cosine is equal to tangent, so this is all equal to the negative tangent squared of x, which is what we're trying to, to get to in the end. So when it says verify here, it really means show algebraically, prove algebraically that what's on the left is equal to what's on the right, which we've just done. All right, let's look at another example. Now, the nice thing about these verify problems is you know what the answer is going to look like in the end. We want to try to get what's on the left to equal what's on the right. Now, some people see these and they say, oh, I don't like that y in there. So it's okay to rewrite it with x or theta or whatever variable you choose. I'm just going to keep it in terms of y. And our very first tip said, let's try to convert everything to sine and cosine. So I know secant is 1 over the cosine of y. Plus, I know tangent is sine of y over the cosine of y. And I'll just leave that equal to what's on the right-hand side. Then we have a, a common denominator already, so I can write this as 1 plus the sine of y over the cosine of y. And I'm trying to show that that's equal to the cosine of y over 1 minus the sine of y. Now from here, there's a few different things you can do, but probably the easiest thing to do at this point is to realize that, hey, we have two fractions set equal to each other. Way back in your middle school mathematics, you learned that if you have two fractions equal to each other, we can cross multiply here. So we can, multiplying this direction and thinking of these in parentheses and multiplying using the distributive property, we get 1 minus sine of y plus sine of y, that's gone. So then we get minus the sine squared of y equals. Multiplying this way, we get the cosine 
squared of y. And then if we move some things around, we get our Pythagorean identity. 1 equals the sine squared of y plus the cosine squared of y. So we have verified that, yes, these two expressions up here are indeed equal to each other. All right, let's take a look at another couple examples. Third example, cosecant of x minus the sine of x equals the cosine of x times the cotangent of x. And not seeing anything squared, any Pythagorean, let's just convert everything to sine and cosine. So cosecant is equal to 1 over the sine of x minus the sine of x. I'm just going to put that over 1 since I'm subtracting two fractions here. Equals the cosine of x times cotangent, which is cosine of x over sine of x. And I'm going to put this other expression over 1 as well. Okay, let's get a common denominator here. I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by the sine of x, which will give me 1 minus the sine squared of x over the sine of x equals, let's multiply top times top, bottom times the bottom, which is the cosine squared of x over the sine of x. Now, since both sides are over sine of x, I can disregard that. Let's just try to set what's on top equal to each other. And take a look, 1 minus sine squared of x we know is equal to cosine squared of x. That's that Pythagorean identity. So we end up with this expression on both sides. So we've just verified that my original equation is always true for any values of x. All right, one last example before we wrap it up. Cosecant of alpha plus cotangent of alpha equals sine of alpha over 1 minus cosine of alpha. And here's an example. A lot of people don't like these alphas, so they rewrite it in terms of x or theta. I'll just leave those alphas in there. I'm going to convert everything to sine and cosine right off the bat. So first, cosecant. That's 1 over the sine of alpha plus cotangent, which is cosine of alpha over the sine of alpha. And if, since we have a common denominator, I can write this 1 plus the cosine of alpha over the sine of alpha. And I'll bring down what was on the right-hand side as well. And actually, once you look at this, this looks like the example um, two examples ago. So at this point, let's follow that same process. Let's cross multiply. Let's see if we can show that these two expressions are equivalent by cross multiplying. So if we do that, using the distributive property and simplifying right away, we get 1 minus the cosine squared of alpha equals the sine squared of alpha. And there's our Pythagorean identity. So we can add cosine squared to both sides, which gives us 1 equals the sine squared of alpha plus the cosine squared of alpha. Okay, now one of the big keys to these kind of problems is practice, so make sure you take care of this assignment. It seems like a lot, but we've got a lot of time to take care of this, so take care of this. Let me know what questions you have, and make sure you understand this before you move on to the next section.